All right, I've been uh, writing uh, firmware for the uh, for the board. It seems to work fine. Let me show you what the uh, what the firmware has to do. So the part is uh, a little eight pin part and uh, we have clock and data. We have serial input and we have chip enable. So I have three pins defined for chip enable clock data. And so this is the timing diagram. Uh, when you uh, chip enable, it takes a while for the internal oscillator to spin up, so you have to wait a little bit. I think it's uh, 40, micros 40 milliseconds? I forget how, how long, 20, 10 milliseconds? I don't remember now. Um, anyway, anyway, you wait some length of time, and then you can start sending data. So, you, so the data is in 5-bit packets, and you clock it on negative going clock pulses. All right, so, and these are the five bits that enter zero, D0 zero through D4, and uh, zero, one through zero, star, pound, and then A, B, C, D, E, A, B, C, D, I'm sorry, and these are the bit patterns, and D4 is always low, okay? If you raise D5 high, then you can output single tones, um, so you can output each one of the, of the eight single tones um, for, for rows, four for columns, and then if you set them all high, then you can uh, turn, turn, off the, uh, turn off the output. So that's the way the data has to go in. And so when you enter five bits, it changes the oscillator. And enter the next one, changes the oscillator. And then when you get done, you can uh, write all ones and it'll turn the oscillator off. Yes, yeah, so let's take a look at that on the oscilloscope. All right, I've got some uh, scope probes hooked up so we can see the uh, clock and data here. And here you can see a screen capture of uh, clock and data. Uh, clock is on the bottom, data is on the top. So you can see that it's uh, five bits, so one, two, three, four, five. It clocks in on the negative edges of the clock. So everything, everything looks good there. And if I zoom way out, this is zoomed in, if I zoom out, uh, let's see here, let me turn on channel 3. Channel 3 is actually the audio output. And you can see uh, we're sending it a new uh, code here. And at that code, it changes frequency from one frequency to the other. Let's take a look at the program here. Uh, so we're going to be using a OLED display. And I'm using the Adafruit SSD 1306 driver. Need to include the uh, appropriate things here for I squared C and stuff. Um, then I'm going to uh, define where I have the uh, DTMF chip wired up. I have the data on pin two, the clock on pin three, and the uh, chip enable on pin four. And uh, okay, so let's go here. We're just initializing the display and uh, we're going to first set the uh, DTMF pins as outputs, set them to some uh, known state for the beginning. We're going to uh, splash uh, MSI guy at the front and uh, do a chip enable. So we're now talking to the chip and we're ready to go. So the loop's going to go from all of the um, values from 0 to 23, which are the, all the DTMF tones. And we're going to do a DTMF send and then update the display with a count. Now the send here, so here's really what you need to know. This is the send routine. Uh, it's going to be uh, five bits, so zero, zero through four. So uh, J is the counter taking care of that. And then uh, we're going to pass this function a value of tone, which is a byte it's going to strip off the first bit, okay? So this right here strips off the first bit. It's gonna tone and zero one. So it's gonna take the uh, the lowest bit, strip that off, and it'll, it'll either be zero or one. And we're gonna write that to the data pin. So we're gonna set the data pin higher or low, depending on what that bit is. And then we're gonna do a clock. We're gonna uh, create a low going edge and then bring it back high again. So the, the low going edge will do the actual clock and then uh, we've done the first bit, so we want to get the second bit. We will rotate tone to the right one place, and then we will go round and round and round until we get all five uh, all five bits done. 
And uh, once all five bits are done, uh, we will uh, delay 200 milliseconds and then get the next tone. And uh, it'll go round and round and round. And there you go. That's all there is to it. It's very, very simple. And uh, it seems to work fine. Okay, there we go. So I think I've got the... Uh, the output working fine. Um, I actually found this scope useful. Um, I was uh, writing the software in my office and I needed to make sure the output was working. And uh, yeah, this little guy came in handy. And he's and he's perfectly quiet. Um, I have another oscilloscope that I could have brought in, but you know it's got a noisy fan, and this thing's absolutely silent. So <laughs> yeah, so it's great. And uh, I didn't feel hampered by only one channel because I was just kind of looking at uh, looking at the output and I'm setting tones and stuff. So uh, for this application, I work great. It's, it's, it's you know super super re responsive. So anyway, that worked great. So I think the next thing I'm going to do here is. Um, uh, go ahead and put on the uh, receive uh, board here. I think I'll, I think I'll mount it. I think I'll mount it down there somewhere. And uh, and uh, now that I have a, a, a display, I didn't really show that to you, but uh, can you really see that? I think you can see that. It's just counting uh, zero to twenty-three down there. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up this uh, decoder board now, and I should be able to like play tones into it and have it have it decode that message and. Uh, and come up on the screen here, so yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's the next step. So uh, I think I'll end this video here.